بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیئر اینڈ ناؤ وی موو ان ٹو دا ٹاپک آف فیلڈرنگ فرام دا پریویس ویڈیو واٹ ڈیڈ وی ڈسکس دیٹ دی دی ایل ٹی آئی سسٹم واز چینجنگ دی ریلیٹو ایمپلیچیوڈ آف سم فریکوینسی کمپوننٹس ناٹ سم آل فریکوینسی کمپوننٹس اوکے ناؤ اینی ویز دس آئی ریٹرن ڈاؤن ٹو سیو مائی سیلف ٹائم اینڈ ناٹ ٹو ویسٹ مائی انرجی ویری مچ فائن so filtering is the new topic and as the name suggests to filter out you know it basically and let me tell you one thing that this topic we are not going to study in a great detail and why is that this book only has just given it a little touch otherwise uh, you know if you are a communication stream uh, electric engineering students so you would be studying a course in the upcoming semester uh, that would be digital signal processing and that course the overall course revolves around this topic of filtering so over here it's just a simple a simple small touch given to it okay anyways so coming to the topic as i told you in the previous video in some applications it is required to change the relative amplitude of some frequency components we would we would want it would be desired that change the frequency change the amplitude of some frequency component how do we do that we would do that with the help of frequency shaping filters we'll see them frequency shaping filters number one or the second case is to eliminate some frequency components entirely the second case is what we would we would you know want to have some frequency components and eliminate the others overall entirely completely so for that what do we use we use the frequency selective filters red red green green fine so these are the two major applications of filters number one to shape them to change the amplitude to give to to change the shape that is number one frequency shaping filters <coughs> the second is what the second is frequency selective to get some frequency components and to eliminate the other so discussing the first frequency shaping filters now the book has discussed it through an example and the example is of an of an audio system a high fidelity audio system right and what do we do in that what do we do you know what a high fidelity system is you can say an amplifier or what you use you use it uh, uh, very much okay often so there are control buttons there are control buttons in an audio system those may be sliding or rotating depending on the manufacturer depending on whatever it is that allows the listener to change the relative amplitudes to change the relative amplitudes of what of the low frequency or of the high frequency components now the low frequency component they are called the bass bass or bass or whatever it is this so let me call it a bass and and the high frequency components are called a treble they're called a treble so depending on this while changing these two things the relative amplitudes of low frequency components high frequency components you change you're changing the sound quality you are making the sound heavier or you are making the sound thinner that depends on these two things so when you change this you are changing the you have a difference in feeling you have a difference in listening of the recording which means you have changed the sound quality similar is the case is not only for the for the hi-fi audio system you know the the frequency scale is also given in, in some devices you have your computer you have your laptop you go to the sound settings in the sound setting you have these bar like structure the bar like graphs what do they represent they, they represent each and every individual things there some may be bass some may be treble some may be volume others anyway anything you play with them you play around with the sound quality you change one you you'll notice that the sound quality is changed you change the other you'll see that the uh, the something else has changed you you, you the, the difference in the feeling you would observe the sound can get heavier it can get thinner shrill or whatever it is you would have a difference in feeling it the scale a book has shown is a decibel scale what is the frequency in hertz scale so this is a 20 hertz and this is a 20 kilohertz the normal audible frequency range of a human being so what do we have is 
if let's say so, so these are two two control buttons okay the low frequency button and the high frequency button so if one is located for this is a decibel scale and you know what a decibel is this is uh, for what for uh, the, the decibel is in which we represent this the the amount of sound or the, the the whatever it is we cannot go in the detail of that you know what a decibel is so anyways if first it was located at five now we've got it reduced Similarly, the second switch says what? At first, it was located at zero. Now we have increased it to five. So, which means we are doing what? We are playing with the sound quality. We are changing. So, these are some lower frequencies. These are some higher frequencies. What does this mean? If you increase the amplitude of the low frequency, which means if you increase the bass level, so what are you doing? You are making the sound heavy. And this is what it is, the green color represents. The lower frequency amplitude has been increased now. So what is this? This is they have increased the bass and the, the sound has been made heavy. The woofer system and this and that, you, you people like it very much. Playing heavy sound, playing a, you say, when you listen to a heavy sound, you say this has a higher bass or higher bass or whatever. So that is what it is, the, the, the lower frequency amplitude is increased. Okay, the next is if you increase the frequency of the higher frequency components, so the sound becomes shrill, the sound becomes thinner. Over here what have we done, we have decreased now the frequency component. So this was just a, re this a graph for a reference. Anyways, the thing is, you only you have two things, bass and treble. You increase the bass, you have a heavy sound. You increase the treble, you have a shrill sound. That is what it is. Now, bass and treble and this and that, this was the first example. The second example is in the image processing, the field of image processing. This was the first. The second is the image processing. And you, you, you read it out from the book yourself. The book has written about it. A two-dimensional image of black and white you have a distance you have brightness this and that these are just theoretical things I get bored while talking of just the like this theoretical things any practical example do we have any practical example so yes we have yes I have it for you the book has it over here but first for that I need to remove the board Okay, what do we do is the, the practical or the mathematical representation of these filters, what would it be? How can we see it? So let's say we consider the differentiator. Let's say we consider the differentiator. So we'll be basically talking of the frequency responses, right? So you know it very well that if you have your x of t and let's say this I'm leaving it uh, empty over here and x of t is any input it's given to an LTI system and you have an output y of t and this y of t is the derivative of x of t the derivative of x of t right now if I have what if I have my x of t equal to the complex exponential signal exponential of j omega t so what would be the output the output would be the derivative of the input so the derivative of j omega t with respect to t would be j omega multiplied exponential of j omega t and what can I say from here from here I can say as exponential j omega t is the eigenfunction, eigenfunction of the system this means that the eigenvalue that is the frequency response is h of j omega frequency response that is equal to h of j omega is basically equal to j omega and i told you the frequency response could be a complex number as over here it is it could be purely real it could be purely imaginary whatever is the case so it can have a magnitude it can have a phase Right? So, if you uh, talk about mainly we are interested in the magnitudes when we are studying over here. So, if I talk about the magnitude of h of j omega, so what would it be? It would be, uh, uh, it would be what? 
it would be omega's magnitude yes yes I'm sorry so it would be the magnitude of omega right so and how do you draw it how do you draw it so you draw it like this if it is with respect to omega so this is the case now if you see so the the phase of this it could be a plus j or a minus j depending on the value of omega so if i have a phase of h of j omega so this could be a plus minus 90 degrees depending on if this is a plus or a minus let me draw it over here so this would be a plus pi by 2 over here and this would be a minus pi by 2 over here we are not interested in this we are interested basically in the frequency responses magnitude so have a look if you see closely to this magnitude what is this saying what is this telling us what information can we get from from this graph yes think about it think about it please yes you're right you're right you're right what is this saying this is basically doing what this is emphasizing on the high frequency components the more you go to the high frequency component the more area you're covering the more the region you're covering so i could say that this is basically doing what emphasizing high frequency components or in other words you could say that this is basically de-emphasizing de-emphasizing the low frequency components as you go toward the, the lower frequencies the area is getting less and less and it's approaching zero we're talking of filters you've already seen basic filters what can i say from here if it's emphasizing the high frequency component if it's de-emphasizing the low frequency component can i not say that the differentiator yes you say it please the differentiator can be used as a high pass filter and yes what does a high pass filter means so yes a high pass filter does what it lets go the higher frequency components it passes it and it stops or rejects the lower frequency components although this is not an ideal ideal high pass filter because it's not completely blocking or letting but anyways the idea could be linked the idea could be linked to a high pass filter so what does it do now what advantage did we get from the Fourier tool so we got the frequency response and what do we have the LTI system combined so we only see it in the time domain this is giving us the differentiation or the slope of the signal whereas in the frequency domain now we know we've studied the frequency domain as well so in the frequency domain it is uh, it is acting as a high pass filter so which means we have covered both the aspects of the system the the time domain aspect and the frequency domain aspect so this can be used to improve the higher frequencies in our signal the book has written like this the differentiator can be used to improve the higher frequencies in our signal and it also has another point and what is that this filter is useful in enhancing the same thing enhancing the rapid variations or transition in the signal and the rapid variations again say what they are again the the higher frequencies let me write it as well the this sort of uh, this filter this filter enhances the rapid variations or transitions in a signal and this means again the very same thing so i believe i finished this video over here this was about the frequency shaping filters if you have any problem well you may not have 
this was just an easy topic you can definitely ask in the comment section and one thing you need to do is you please subscribe to the channel as well so in the next video we see the frequency selective filters so see you very soon inshallah with the next video till then take care of yourself and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers and do subscribe to the channel goodbye